Welcome to Fight for Justice for the week of February 4th, 2015. I'm your host, Freeman Fight. Uh, with me is Arthur Fight. Uh, we are lawyers here in Anniston. We practice primarily personal injury, uh, some business contractual matters, and some family law. You can reach us at 256-231-9330, or you can email us. Uh, you can email me directly at freeman at fightlawfirm.com. Uh, this week we have a special guest, John Tenney from Roanoke, Alabama, that's going to talk to us a little bit about the BP oil settlement, uh, and claims are now back open at least for a couple more months, so I'll let Dad introduce Mr. Tenney. Uh, we did a show several months ago in which John, from, he's from Roanoke, came up and talked about the BP oil spill that occurred now two or three years ago. We talked about the claims process, and then what happened uh, was there were numerous appeals and slowed and stopped the process down. Uh, I think in December, the United States Supreme Court refused to consider any further appeals. So now it's back on the table and money's being paid, uh, millions and maybe billions. They certainly have done it to the states of Alabama and the United States government for the oil spill. As you may remember, there was a blowout of an oil well south of New Orleans spewed, bill, uh, well, not billions, but hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil into the ocean, blew a lot of the shoreline. It affected a lot of businesses. So, uh, John, welcome to our show again. Thank you for coming for the second time. Well, we appreciate wanna, it. We want to talk today about, first we'll revisit the issue of what this is all about, the claims that can be filed. Uh, John and I work together. We have maybe 30 or 40 claims and he does some others with other attorneys around the state. Uh, it's a claims process. Let's go back, John, to the time of the oil spill and let's remind everybody what happened and what resulted in terms of the legal things that we you can do. You know, it's amazing, <clears throat> Arthur, when you think about it, but the oil spill was actually um, uh, almost five years ago now. The oil flowed in the Gulf between May of 2010 and it was many months after that before they actually uh, got the oil wells capped. The result of um, the spill was devastating if you lived on the coast. And the thing that um, evolved as time went on was that people began to realize the impact that it had statewide, uh, in not only in Alabama, but in Louisiana, uh, a little bit of uh, Florida, Texas, and uh, the impact on businesses was really devastating. And it wasn't just the businesses on the coast, but once the litigation uh, started and people started realizing uh, that people, for instance, uh, you take the travel industry, just using that as an example, when you had tourists that normally would come from northern states, they would come throughout, you know, the state of Alabama, they'd stop, buy gas, they'd stop, you know, go to motels. and once the tourism industry shut down because of what was going on on the beaches, all of these businesses began to lose money. And that's basically what precipitated the class action litigation that resulted finally in a settlement. And I, and I got a copy of that settlement online. It's over a thousand pages. I have never in my career seen any kind of settlement that long before. And it, just, it detailed how you make claims against for certain businesses and who you make them to and all that sort of stuff. So that's when you and I got connected up. Uh, we got several uh, businesses here in the Calhoun County area to come in and let's file claims and see if you can get paid. The interesting thing about the process, settlement agreement, this is what's been at issue for all this time, is that you don't have to prove causation. You don't have to prove that that spill actually hurts your business. They developed another te a test or several tests, depending on what kind of business you had, and if you could show an impact, an impact on you, they would assume and agree that it impacted you so you didn't have to go through all that mess, the expensive mess of proven causation. So as a result of that, John, what happened with well, the litigation? What, what happened, there was a, I mean, you had basically 10,000 or more suits filed against BP, not only by people on the coast, but by people uh, that were uh, in just any number of industries. Uh, and so they decided that the best way to handle this would be through settlement through the national class action. And BP's lawyers and a group of lawyers appointed by the court that was called a steering committee 
hammered out over several months what the settlement would be and they devised the method by which businesses would be compensated. And they came up with formulas, they came up with uh, grids that would show what some business would have to do in order to be compensated. And it was a fairly uh, involved process to begin with, but it was a process that BP agreed upon and that the steering committee representing the plaintiffs and businesses, everyone agreed on it. Uh, it went in front of the federal, federal judge and the federal judge had to approve it. BP lawyers came in, uh, steering committee lawyers came in, went in front of the federal judge and the federal judge said, okay, uh, if this is uh, the way that everyone has agreed, then this is going to be the way it's going to be settled. So the basic method of determining if a business is entitled to a portion uh, or a payment was to determine if their, they were, their gross revenue declined uh, between 2007, 2008, 2009, and then you compared that to the revenue that they got in 2010. If the revenue went down uh, during the months that the oil was flowing in the Gulf as, by as much as 10 percent, that was the first part of the eligibility test. Called the V-test. Yeah, v -test. and that's the first half of the V-test. Then once you determined if you had a 10 percent loss uh, when you had, did the comparisons, then you had to show that in 2011 you came back up and come back up, you know, uh, a percentage. And if you could show that it, you met the test, it was assumed you were hurt by the oil spill. Correct. You didn't have to go back and say the oil came up here. Let me interject one thing before we go back to John. <clears throat> the deadline for filing these claims has been extended from the original deadline to June this year, isn't it? June 15th. June you 15th. have to have your claim in. It's just like a statute of limitations where if you don't have your claim in by that time, that's it. You will and they, never they had closed the claims for a while, and now they're, they're back open until yeah. that point. Well, they weren't really okay. closed, but the deadline had never been definitively established, and it was the action of the United States Supreme okay, Court. Okay, we, we've got to end for this segment. We'll come back in a couple of minutes for segment two. Uh, we appreciate you watching and being here today. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. And Thank remember, you. if you have any questions, you can email us or email me directly at freeman at fightlawfirm.com. Welcome back to the second segment. Tonight we're talking about the BP oil spill and uh, now settlement uh, is basically final and payments are starting to go out, but we still have a chance to file claims for people until uh, I believe June 15th. So if you have any questions about whether you're eligible uh, or you want some of the forms, you can call us at 256-231-9330 or email me at freeman at fightlawfirm.com. Uh, we have John, Mr. John Tenney with us up from Roanoke. And we're going to kind of uh, take up where we left off at the end of segment one. And I believe we were talking about, you know, what the uh, process is for filing, who's eligible, the V test. We, we talked a little bit about, I think we need to start off by talking about just who's eligible, what kind of businesses, what kind of businesses, there's, there's bonuses that uh, certain industries get, restaurants, uh, hotels, they're allowed bonuses in this formula. So let's just talk well, a little bit about also that. Also, you got the state into three categories for claims, I believe. The ones on the coast are treated differently than the ones here in North Alabama. But John's going to go through the process. Uh, there are some businesses, John, that are not eligible, like banks can't recover under this. Let's talk, talk go ahead and tell our audience a little bit about uh, what's, what, what you have to do to file a claim. Well, let me, uh, before we or get to that, eligible. yeah, we'll talk about, you know, uh, who can file a claim in this. The first thing you need to understand is there are a few industries that are excluded from the ability to file a claim. Those industries, as you mentioned, would be the banks, financial institutions, uh, some oil-related uh, industry um, companies would be excluded. Real estate developers are excluded. So those are the very, you know, limited ones that are excluded. People uh, have been a little skeptical about whether or not, you know, their particular kind of business might be eligible. But other than those that I mentioned, if you have not filed or had someone determine or look at your books and determine whether you're eligible, 
you uh, really could be missing out on a very substantial payment from BP. I've had, I cannot tell you how many people that uh, have come to me and said, well, I don't uh, have any connection with the coast. I don't uh, go down there that much, and I don't understand how in the world, you know, I could be eligible. Well, under the formula that was approved by the federal judge, basically all those businesses in the state of Alabama, other than the ones that I mentioned, are potentially eligible for a payment from the BP uh, claim uh, settlement fund. And we're not talking about millions of dollars, we're talking about billions of dollars that have been set aside, and there's no cap you know, on the amount of money that BP will have to pay. It's not that they get to a certain uh, level to $10 million and then they don't have, I mean $10 billion and they don't have to pay anymore. The amount of money they pay out is uncapped. It's whatever it's going to take to compensate those uh, affected businesses. The process is fairly simple. You just uh, contact either me or Arthur. We have a form. Or Freeman. Or Freeman, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't want to leave you out, Freeman. Uh, you can contact us, and we've had the numbers you know, on the screen, and we have a simple form that we can mail to you. You can call. We'll explain to you what you have to do to actually uh, file the claim, but it's basically, you just take your uh, revenue month by month for a period of five years, from 2007 to 2011. You turn that back into us, and then we can analyze it and determine if you are gonna be entitled to it. What has transpired over the last five years is that many, many, many businesses uh, file claims, and BP, once they realized the extent of the money they were going to be paying out on these legitimate claims, they began finding ways to try to appeal and undo the settlement process. And they took it uh, to the United States uh, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. They've appealed uh, every way they can and tried to undo the settlement. During the course of this, BP has done a lot of advertising in the state of Alabama and in the affected states trying to dissuade people from filing claims to try to make them think. Well, in fact, John, I know there has been some false claims filed, and there are not many, but there are some in the New Orleans area in particular, and there have been some prosecutions that resulted uh, because of those false claims filed. So we, we don't want you to come with us as false information. It's got to be true and above board and all that. And then we'll analyze it. The accountants that John has working on these does the process. And then, uh, John, after that analysis is done, what happens next? Well, once you do the analysis, then we will send the, uh, the forms to the accountant, assuming that you meet the test. Then the accountant would contact you and ask you to send certain information to them. Then the accountant has to put it in a format that's acceptable uh, by the claims uh, administrator. And this is a situation where, as of you know, now we're talking about not tens of thousands, but we're up in the hundreds of thousands of claims uh, now uh, that have been filed. So the process is once uh, all of the information has been formatted and then it's downloaded to the claims administrator. Claims administrator will then analyze the information and we'll send out a notice, an eligibility notice, uh, to the uh, attorney that's representing that individual. And the once the eligibility notice comes in, depending on the amount that a person is uh, eligible for payment for, there are certain uh, lengths of time that BP could appeal. If it's under $50,000, for instance, BP would have 10 days to file an appeal uh, on that or ask for a review. or if the, uh, your claim was for 50000 and the claims administrator says that it's worth 30000 then you could ask you know, for a review of it. The review process is not going through uh, an appellate court like you traditionally think of an, an appeal going It's an going administrative to, appeal, isn't it? It's what? Administrative appeal. Well, it's not even an administrative appeal, Arthur, because uh, you have... Uh, Individuals, it could be a lawyer, it could be uh, even someone uh, not even, you know, in the legal field that could review to determine if the claims administrator made a fair determination. And then once that uh, determination comes back, 
you basically that's it as to you know the amount of money you know that you're going to get. There's um, no appeal in court from that decision. You're bound by it. You're bound that, yeah. Yeah, under the terms of the uh, at, settlement. At one point there were panels, weren't there? Depending on the level of your yes, there's panels are still in place, but you don't get to the panel until you get to a very substantial you know a award. Substantial sum. Of yes, money. yes. You'd have okay. three three person panel, you know, that could de determine you know an appeal that might be made. And what's the what's the level for that? I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, that when you get a hundred thousand and above, you're going to get into the, uh, or it may be two fifty. I don't remember offhand, but it's. Uh, Would that be something where arguments would be held? No, no, there Still are no, no arguments. arguments. No, everything would be submitted. You have a right to, you know, submit what your position is in paper. You don't appear before them. You don't can't request oral argument. So uh, it's a little bit like arbitration. Once that panel decides it, or the whoever reviews it decides it, you you're stuck with that. And you've got to take the money. And you don't even get to have an argument, so you don't even get the benefit of that yeah, like you would not, in arbitration. Well, it's not like a court hearing. I mean, like court decision where you get to argue your case and present evidence. You do it all in writing. Correct. And then if you appeal, you can continue with your writing and hope they'll change it in a way that helps you. But they may not. You may, that may be in the road. So with thousands of claims out there, like you were talking about, over 10,000 claims, this is really about the only way you can possibly administer this thing, is to go through that kind of a process. we got to go to break, but uh, we'll be back for the third segment. We'll finish up talking about the oil spill and try to give you all the information you need to hopefully file a, a claim and, and get some money for it. If you have any questions, you can give us a call, 256-231-9330, and we'll be happy to get you a form to fill out so we can see if you're eligible. Welcome back to the third and final segment of tonight's show. Tonight we're talking about the BP oil settlement and how you can get uh, get paid if you have a, a good legitimate claim. Uh, I also want to remind you guys that uh, if you've, you've been hurt or know someone that's been hurt, we do personal injury work. If you're having problems at home, we do uh, domestic work. And if you're having problems with your employer or you've got a contract situation, we handle those too, and you can reach us at 256 231 9330. Now, we'll go back to Mr. Tenney here to start back up where we left off about the BP oil settlement and uh, who's eligible, who's not eligible. I think we've basically covered it all. Something else I wanted to bring up before we start getting back into the specifics is that uh, I don't think everyone is clear on is that BP was actually appealing a settlement that they made. This wasn't a decision that a jury made or, or anything like that. It was a settlement they, they made, and they actually, I, I've, I've never even heard of uh, someone appealing their own settlement. Um, the, the thing, Freeman, that was um, so funny about this is that uh, they actually, the federal judge came up with examples because when it was presented by BP's attorneys and the settlement uh, attorneys, there were certain questions that came up uh, where, for instance, they said, well, what if you had an accounting firm and you had three accountants in the firm and one of the accountants died when the oil was flowing in the Gulf and then the revenue went down because they only had, you know, two accountants instead of three with um, one, you know, having died. Would that person or that firm be eligible where it was clear that the revenue went down because somebody passed away? And BP said, we understand there will be instances like that. We think this is a fair settlement, Judge, and we want you to approve it. And then after they realized, you know, how much money was being paid out, they started the uh, campaign to try to undo everything. The one thing that BP did accomplish uh, during the course of all the appeals is that the formula, the initial formula for determining how much a person or a business was eligible to receive was changed. Uh, it affected the professionals, um, doctors, lawyers, uh, professionals, and contractors and those in the agricultural sector more so probably than uh, anyone. It did affect everyone. So they were able to accomplish something by giving the formula to change. And basically what it did was it matched uh, expenses against revenue more than it did in the initial settlement. For instance, if you had a contractor who completed a house and he goes to a closing and he gets a check for $300,000, under the old formula, that 
$300,000 that was collected, the only thing that would be counted against that $300,000 for that month was whatever his monthly expenses were. The money that he spent building that $300,000 house, the labor that he paid months earlier was not counted, but now under the new formula it is. But even with that said, if you, if you own a business and you have not had your claim analyzed, I don't care if you're a hairdresser, I don't care if you're you know, an electrician, plumber. Or, or even a lawyer. Even a lawyer. We can do you it. Know, if you haven't had your claim uh, analyzed, even a TV station <laughs> <laughs> analyzed, you absolutely need to contact your uh, office, the, the Freeman firm, Freeman, <laughs> uh, you're not an author anymore. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a has-been. Yeah. Contact Freeman. Not that old yet. Yes, contact Freeman or uh, myself, and we will be glad to help you. There's no charge, you know, to help you determine if you are eligible, you know, to make a claim under the settlement. But since the United States Supreme Court has ended all appeals, BP, it's over for BP with respect to appeals, and the primary thing you got to remember is June the 15th, but don't think you're going to call us on June the 14th and get your claim filed. If you sincerely want your claim analyzed, you need to contact us really before mid-March because there are going to be things that we're going to need to come back to you to ask for from an accounting standpoint, and it generally takes about you know two months of time to uh, get all the information by, together. By the way, John, I, this has come up several times here. People, since we're further from the Gulf than if you lived obviously in Orange Beach or Gulf Shores or Mobile, uh, we're a little more remote from the beach. So some people ask me, so well, you mean I can get money and I don't have to prove I've been impacted? Well, this is the neat thing about it. BP has agreed that if you meet these tests, you are due to be paid. You don't have to worry about proving that. That's the nice thing about it. And this is the problem they run into. Now they wish you had done it differently. And we say to them, it's too late. You have set out the criteria. If we can show that you qualify, you're entitled to a payment. And if you can't qualify, you're not entitled to a payment. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. And, and a lot of people say, I don't feel like I've been injured. Well, they will assume it's impacted you if you can meet these financial tests we're talking about. Well, it, it's, it, I think it's important to know because I, I hear a lot of people saying that they don't feel like they've been impacted, they feel guilty about it. There's nothing to feel guilty about. There's no way to prove it. I, I was just telling uh, John and, and my dad during the break, it could be as simple as you're in a place where a guy has a lot of, uh, he does a lot of business with you, but he owned a lot of property at the beach. And all of a sudden that property's worth half of what it was. He's not spending money with you anymore. Uh, it could be something like that, that you're impacted in everything and now and today um, with, with the Internet and everything so interconnected, it's, it'd be impossible to tell uh, how much you were affected. Well, you're affected in the way it's determined whether or not you're affected is by your revenue. That's what the test is. If you went down in 2010, there's a reason that you went down in 2010. And I guess what, I should have said if you were affected, if you know, if your revenue went down, it'd be impossible for them to say, well, it wasn't because of this, and that's why they agreed to pay it. It's just, I mean, it's just a ripple effect uh, when you really consider it, because you have, for instance, you know, truckers that were carrying goods and services uh, down to the coast, they weren't making those trips, they weren't buying that gas, they weren't eating, you know, there, and then of course. Then since they aren't making any money, then they don't have enough money, you know, for their wife to go to the hairdresser, you know, to spend the extra money. Yeah, so John, it's just a uh, ripple effect. Talk a little bit about how long, once you file a claim, how long you can expect it to take before you get an answer. Well, the claims process slowed down a lot from the standpoint of payment while all these appeals by BP were going on. But since the United States Supreme Court uh, finally, you know, made a determination that uh, it was it was over, uh, as far as the appeals go, the checks have really been coming uh, with frequency now. So we, We've got another minute to go, so from the time you file a claim till it's decided, what period of time would that you... There's, would you, no, there's no way to tell. It just depends on your business. It could be uh, months, or it could be uh, as long as a year? Yes, it could be. It could be. Aren't they, are they paying out the smaller claims a little... Uh, they're getting it paid a little quicker, aren't they? They're, yes, there are. The smaller claims are coming in, you know, quicker. But we have had some six-figure claims, you know, already paid. Yeah. Uh, well, we. I think now we have another minute left. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> so is there anything else you want to mention? You know, I just can't, up? you know, emphasize to you enough that um, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family uh, to see if you are eligible. Um, probably, I'm going to say, 50 to 60 percent of the businesses in Calhoun County, I'm sure, have already contacted, you know, an attorney or someone to determine their eligibility. Well, in this show, actually, I believe if you have UVerse, it gets shown uh, in Birmingham, it gets shown all over the place. So it doesn't oh, matter where oh, you are, you can, way, you can give you us a can call. You can go to tv24.tv, go on demand. TV24, I don't believe it's TV24. What is it? It is TV24. Yeah, you actually had that right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you can go on Anyway, demand. we got to go to break, but if no, you want to have a claim analyzed, it's free, it's quick. Give us a call, 256-231-9330, and we'll get it done for you. Do it before March.